2,000 years ago in Ireland, people gathered at the beginning of winter for a festival to keep the dark, unknown ghosts away, including death that happened most often in winter. This was the beginning of Halloween, where we still continue to make sense of the dark side of life through fables, folklore, make-believe, and faith. Halloween and All Hallows' Eve are an acknowledgement of these mysteries as we continue to contrast light and dark, day and night. One thing we know, there is plenty of dark, but the light shines in the darkness and the darkness has not overcome it. Hello there and welcome to my channel. I decided to do a crow theme this year just because I can kind of add it to the fall theme that I already have. <clears throat> and I have my own personal inspiration um, from my home in Los Angeles. Um, but I, I also did a deep dive into Halloween because I was curious about the origin and it was very interesting to see that Halloween really started about a thousand years ago in um, Ireland. Imagine, can you even imagine how it would have felt to live in the dark parts of the world in the winter time? They were coming up, the pagan world or the secular world was coming up with ways to manage their fears and they had all these ways to ward off ghosts. And so that was really the origin of Halloween. And then the Catholic Church, uh, about 500 years after that, decided to make it an All Saints Day. But whether it's pagan or secular or religious um, or Christian, really in many ways it's how we manage the idea of death and dying and bones and skeletons and all the things that um, really are very much of a mystery to us because we don't know what it means to, to be dead. <laughs> and so um, that's, that was my take on Halloween. I thought it was really interesting. I wanted to share with you. We're getting deep into October now and the weather's changing. This morning we had the most awesome solar eclipse here in Southern California. Everything turned amber and it was just spectacular. Um, today I'm going to share with you a martini recipe, a hallow teeny recipe I created um, several years ago. It's absolutely delicious. It tastes like Halloween. We're also going to make a French chicken pot pie that is um, pretty much made to freeze and then thaw and serve with a beautiful puff pastry on the top. It's very elegant and um, it's, it's actually gorgeous and really fun to serve um, friends and family as well as a few um, fun tips on the way I decorated for Halloween this year obviously with birds. We have our witch up here, which is a family tradition. And truly, I think holidays, at, at the heart of our holidays are um, the traditions that we share with our families. So let's go ahead and get started. The reason why I love this martini is it's all equal parts. So if, if you're making one, I would say it's, it's an ounce of each. If you're making two, it would be two ounces of each and so on. So we're going to just start in order with um, like an orange liqueur. I like Grand Marnier. A little shot glass. Not like that. Next up, vodka. And then um, this is espresso that I made and put in the refrigerator, but it can be like a cold brew or um, a really rich coffee. Um, better to, to make it a day ahead and refrigerate it, but a shot of coffee and it keeps your guests really happy. This is optional. It makes for a sweeter drink. Um, some people really don't like a sweet cocktail. So, so far it's really not sweet. But for me, um, and it, it's actually not too sweet. So a shot of Kahlua. Okay, so that is it. Ice.
And for the garnish, it's so pretty. A whole slice of orange, as thin as possible. Mm. To float on the top. It's really fun because spider floats on the top and it's just a little spooky and it's so, oh my gosh, so delicious. Mm. I hope you try it. This French chicken pot pie recipe is from Ina Gardens Barefoot Contessa. Make it ahead and that's why it's awesome because you can make it ahead. And you just start out with four chicken breasts I do the skinless, it, you can go either way or with the bones on. And um, I like to, because there's no skin, I tend to put a lot of olive oil on them and then a lot of salt and pepper. They're gonna go in the oven at 350 for about 35 minutes. What's neat about this recipe is while these are baking, I'm going to make the sauce. All right, so about five carrots are, are chopped and into six tablespoons of butter. I have four leeks here and it's going to amount to about four cups of chopped leeks that go into the pot. This video here at, at the four minutes and 15 second mark shows how to cut leeks if you're interested. I go in depth there. So this is going to saute for about 8 to 10 minutes and meanwhile I'm going to cut the mushrooms, the garlic and tarragon. And the best way to clean a mushroom is with a damp cloth just to get the dirt off. I've already cleaned the rest.
leeks, mushrooms, tarragon and garlic, cook in the butter for another six minutes. A quick tip about mushrooms, they, it's basically they're fungus. They don't like to be stuck in a plastic bag and they can get really slimy really fast. The minute that I bring them home, I put them in a bowl in the refrigerator and that way they can last for about a week. And sometimes you just have to kind of turn them over so that they, the top ones dry out. Tip about mushrooms. Next, we're gonna put in a third cup of white flour and cream, chicken stock, and sherry. This smells so delicious. That tarragon, it's nutty. It's what makes this chicken pot pie so fabulous and French. I'm gonna put in a third a cup of flour and cook it for just a minute here into the veg mix. Mixing with that butter, what it does is it turns it into um, a base for the sauce. And then two and a half cups of chicken stock. And then we're gonna do a half a cup of heavy cream. And six tablespoons of sherry. Turn up the heat here a little bit. A quarter cup is four tablespoons. So six tablespoons is a quarter cup and then a half again. And then a half cup cream. Yum. Two teaspoons of salt and a teaspoon of pepper. It's coming to a boil now. We're going to turn the, the heat down and simmer it for about two or three minutes. The sauce is bubbling away and the chicken has cooled enough to cut. I'm gonna cut them in, in cubes, the breasts, um, not quite inch, maybe three quarter inch cubes. And then I have 10 ounces of baby peas frozen, they're frozen, which is about two cups. I took out a sheet of puff pastry before I started just to let it thaw. The rest just stay in the freezer so they're available as needed. But the puff pastry 
is so neat. It comes like this in a sheet. And then I'm gonna roll it out with just a little bit of flour. The next step is finding an oven proof bowl because these are going to go in the oven and um, you just take it and place it down on the pastry and then cut about about a half inch inch around the bowl because it's going to go over the edge. So fill the bowl. I've made this before with more filling or less filling and either way is fine. So that's one egg, a tablespoon of water to create kind of a glue. And then this is the fun part. Go around the edge. That's what's gonna make the pastry stick. Then the pastry goes on top. It's like a little pie, a little individual pie. Some little just like any pie a way for it to breathe a little bit make it look pretty and then this makes the pastry nice and golden this can make between six and eight pies And then any kind of salt will do. Ina recommends the fleur de sel. It's a little brinier, it's just right on top. And it's gonna go into the oven 400 degrees for about 20 minutes. Here's a little, little tip about white or any kind of flour. Never get it wet. It turns, it's gluten, it turns to glue. So just a brush of the board into the trash can and you'll save yourself a lot of time and trouble. The beauty of freezing food and having freezer ready food is that you can always have food because the worst time to cook is when you're hungry and tired and then to be thinking about food. It's nice to be able to pull it out of the freezer, defrost it in the microwave or overnight and then uh, be able to, to bake it off or, or just heat, reheat. Um, but there are lots of ways to freeze food. These glass containers with plastic tops is a way. For any kind of lasagna or anything that's kind of held together, I like these kind of restaurant containers and the tops you can write on so you can remember when, what it is because you can't see it. And then these weck jars, I really like these, these weck jars because they're all glass. And um, all, of, all of these need to go into the refrigerator and cool off be before they could go into the freezer. Um, there's a little secret to the weck jars. I gave my mother-in-law these weck jars and she's like, how the heck does it work? Because what happens is when you fill it up, even if it's cold and then put the, the lid on, tight. These wet jars have clamps, so it has this rubber 
and then a glass lid and then these clamps. If you clamp it down, the food actually, when it freezes, is it expands, the liquid expands. So the secret to, to freezing in WEC is to keep the food about a half inch shy of the, the lid, just freeze with the glass lid. Once it's frozen, then put the rubber, the rubber and the clamps on, and then it's perfect. So that's it for freezing food. And um, it just makes life really, really easy to have a well-stocked freezer. Just took these out of the oven. They're piping hot. They smell so good. They can sit for a good 10, 15 minutes. These are one of my favorite recipes for company because the, the whole thing can be made and put in the fridge a few hours before they go into the oven. And that way you're just free from having to do any kind of cooking or prep work um, while, while you're entertaining your guests. So, or just for yourself. Um, it's just kind of a no brainer. And I think you'll love these. Oh my goodness, this French chicken pot pie recipe is to die for. It's absolutely heavenly, so good. I hope you decide to try it. I also strongly recommend trying the Hallow Teeny. It's delicious. And I hope you enjoyed the very simple Halloween decor that I did today that is basically um, based in nature, um, other than our, our little witch there. Um, but it just, it, it was really neat to just set up the, the, the birds on top of our already pumpkins. And it just made it really easy, but a little spooky. If you enjoyed today's video, I would love to have you hit the subscribe button below and join our family. As always, I so enjoy making these videos. I love our back and forth and I hope to see you soon.